I said I would tell you what we've got going on. So today I am off to my appointment for ADHD medication. What we've done with all the bits I bought in the IKEA haul. And I was like, am I gonna love this? Am I gonna be like, oh, too shiny. I'm, about to I'm going to say the same thing I've said when coming out of every single one of my ADHD appointments so far, which is, that's not what I expected. I must admit, I didn't have any anxiety or stress until now, and until they said there was something wrong with the thing and need blood pressure. That's not helping my blood pressure. Hi guys, Ari here from mummyof4.com. Oh, welcome back to my channel and another cheeky little vlog. So in my last vlog, I'm not sure if it was the last video to go out, but it was the last time I vlogged, uh, we did a little bit of an Ikea haul, because the video before that was an Ikea come shop with me. I just wanted to start off by showing you what we've done with all the bits I bought in the Ikea haul. From whatever, put everything. Let's take a look. Starting off in Bella's room, and Daddy of Four has put up her lights. So these are the same lights I've got in my bedroom for my dressing table. And I always wanted lights like this. In fact, I always wanted a dressing table growing up and I didn't have one till I was in my 20s. Bella had this when we moved in. I thought it kind of looked very Beauty and the Beast and she loves it. But we've added these lights. They're very like stage lights, theater lights, which obviously I was a bit of a dancing kid growing up. So I just loved the idea of this. And it's just a really nice little addition to the room. The other thing that's been added in here is Bella's had one of the vases with flowers and from ikea i bought some glass bead things to go in the bottom so it'd be like fake water so anyway this is one little addition then zara has also got new lights the other thing that's new is the mirror this mirror also came from the same ikea haul the desk if you missed a previous vlog was part of my desk in my office I've now got a new sit-stand desk, so this has come up to be Zara's, and the chair was new in a recent vlog, but you will have seen that if you're, you're kind of up to date. This is new for my key as well. Zara found that, and that's just completing her little desk setup. Then over here, Zara's got the lamp that used to be, originally I think it was in my office, and then it was on her desk. This chest of drawers is new. My husband's put that together. We've got these either side of the bed in our room. We've got one next to the dressing table for all the girls' hair things, and Bella's got one too. It's largely, still mostly empty, but I have bought some organizer container things to go inside there, but she's chuffed with that. The table that was here is currently here in the corner of my bedroom, along with a load of other stuff that needs to go up the attic. So these chairs and this table, I think we're gonna use for something we've got coming up that I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, these are dresses. Are these dresses I wanna have made into baby blankets? They are, aren't they? Um, so they just need to go up the attic till I find someone to do that. Those are baskets of swim things. I've not yet unpacked from Alton Towers, so they need to, well, I've unpacked them, but they just need to go away. Um, and this was, that ice cream thing that we had in Alton Towers, but I'm gonna put that with the Halloween decorations because quite frankly, it's a baby's head and it's a bit creepy. It's from the Cursed Alton Manor, but I just thought that would be good for Halloween. So that needs to go up the attic too. So all this is currently just dumped in the corner of my bedroom, but these tables were in Zara's room, as was this mirror. And then I finally persuaded my husband to get rid of the television that I'm not even sure was plugged in in our bedroom and just have a bit of clear space. And now this area is looking a bit clearer or at very least it will, once we get rid of all this stuff up the attic. But I'm happier with that space. Just imagine that gone. Imagine that just not there. This is looking nicer, I think. I said I would tell you what we've got going on, wouldn't I? That we might use the little, probably not the chairs, but maybe the pink tables for. And my husband, also known as Daddy of Four, has been making a start, at least, on building a summer house for the garden. So in effect, it's gonna be like a much, much smaller version of our extension. He laid out the the wood to show me the size, like, will this do, will this kind of work here? And we kind of agreed it together. I think what we're going to do is put the garden furniture 
into it as sofa. So we're gonna give it a good scrub. And one of my biggest bugbears, if you've been around here for quite some time, you will have heard me talk about this, is garden furniture cushions and what to do with them because you have to bring them in when it's raining and then obviously you want to put them out but then they ended up either like stacked in the kitchen which was a right pain and they're in the way or they're in my husband's shed which means they're in his way but equally too much of a pain to get in and out. I've never found a box that's kind of like we've got these box things that came with the garden furniture but they're not dry enough as boxes that the cushions wouldn't go kind of damp and mildewy and they're not big enough I guess to, to fit them all inside. So the solution might be to scrub the garden furniture and have that living in the summer house. And then when it is dry, we can just carry the, so the stuff out of the doors and then we could sit on the sofa outside and then they can all kind of sit inside and the cushions can live on the seats where I'd like them to live, but they won't get wet because they'll be inside the summer house. So we laid the base out into a rectangle and then had a whole load of, oh, was it concrete delivered? cement I'm not sure um, and has laid that out that is still drying at the moment but the base is in place and then apparently next is the frame much like when he did the extension and then the roof and then some walls and plaster I suppose and floor and it's in effect going to be very very similar to our extension with a sliding door and everything so it'll just be another extra room for the children to utilize kind of like a games room I'm kind of thinking maybe they can have board games out there. The garden furniture as sofas, maybe replace the garden furniture, I don't know, but at the moment, just the garden furniture we've got with, you know, the, the seating cushions and then extra cushions and things just to kind of make it nice, maybe some blankets. And yeah, that should be hopefully really, really nice for them. I think the flooring is gonna be exactly like this flooring we have in the extension. And I think the doors are gonna be just sliding doors, just like this. I don't know how long it's going to take. So far, he's been at it for two days. Of course, the first thing that had to happen was he had to move the playhouse uh, using kind of rollers. So he's moved the playhouse from the corner where it was. That has gone into the opposite corner of the garden. But ultimately, I might use those little pink tables as kind of coffee tables or games tables or whatever in the summer house because the tables that are already in the garden they kind of the, the IKEA tables are great and they're quite bomb proof for being outside and they, they last really well considering they live in the garden they get abused but they do kind of fill up with water you wouldn't want to bring them back inside once they've been outside in the rain because yes water seems to get into them they seem to be kind of bogged down with it Anyway, watch this space if you enjoy a bit of like building content because there's going to be a bit more of that as the summer house comes together. Of course, the other thing we could get is more of these cocktail sofas if we don't want to use the garden furniture. I think we'll probably stick with the garden furniture out there, but these things are great. These were from home base and they were like a bargain price. They've lasted really well. And the other thing I got from Ikea was this little e-kit unit, which... I know some of you are concerned this was going to look a bit squashed and it possibly does look a little bit squashed but I really wanted a little tabley thing. I wanted a bit of plant here and I wanted to put my wax melt burner thing there which is electric so it's plugged into the wall and I just wanted to have that splash of colour behind me when I'm filming. I can also put things on it as like a little coffee table and all I've got in it to be honest is cameras. Oh sitting down. So it's one of these poppy, you know, like, woo. Um, and yeah, I've just got cameras in there at the moment because otherwise they were out all over the desks. There was some debate when we were in Ikea, do we get wooden legs? Do we get metal legs? With hindsight, I should have got wooden legs because there's wood on there and that would have matched. And I didn't think about that in the time and I was feeling flustered and Daddy of Four was needing to leave because he'd had enough. So I chose the wrong legs for it but thank you to those of you that suggested I got the legs I like the look of the legs I just should have gone for wooden ones that was silly of me um but you know I don't hate it it doesn't really matter I just kind of didn't occur to me till we got home there's wooden legs right next to it that would have made a lot of sense but this is just a smaller size box than these calyx boxes so it's not quite as deep but I kind of like it it's, it's kind of cute so is it a little squashed possibly but I like it and Surely that's all that matters. And the Calyx box that was over there is now here. And I've also realized I've got this Amazon parcel I need to sort out 
before we can uh, get on with some work. Not very exciting. One of these has already gone to school with William. Long white football socks that he needed for school. So, thrilling. About to open this, need to reach for my trusty slice tool. These are the deodorant I use. Look, thrilling. I buy them in multi packs because it's cheaper that way. And when I've only got one or two left, I buy more. And I like the smell of this and it lasts really well. These are a bit more exciting. I am flipping obsessed with these. I have realized that eating chocolate and sugary things, it's not something I need to stop doing, but it's more like I need to be aware of the timing of it. I feel like my body has a really extreme reaction to highly processed sugary foods such as chocolate. And let's face it, I love chocolate so much. I'm chocoholic would probably be an accurate description. But if I eat chocolate, the sugary stuff, sweets, after a meal, I feel like it's like alcohol. It's like if I eat it on an empty stomach, I end up getting a terrible sugar crash and then I get the shakes and then I wanna eat more sugar to kind of counteract the, the sugar crash. Not that that's what happens with alcohol. I just guess with alcohol, it has more of an impact if I was to drink on an empty stomach. If, however, I have chocolate after dinner, then it's like my body is unbothered and it's fine. So these are such a great um, compromise because they are genuinely, in fact, I'm so hungry, I'm gonna eat one now and show you. These are chocolate protein balls, but honestly, they taste like truffles. Like genuinely, I'm obsessed with these things and they taste like a real treat. So they are, just to give you, um, a general gist of it. They weigh 40 grams per 40 gram ball. There is 9.3 grams of protein. So that's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, so large amounts of protein, 182 calories, if that's something you're interested in. But if I was to just eat chocolate, if that was like, uh, let's see which chocolate do I love? A bar galaxy, like, you know, like a small bar, not a massive bar. A bar of Galaxy or, um, I love those Maltesers, Teasers bars. You know the ones? They're like about this big. Love those. I would thoroughly enjoy that, but an hour later, I'd have a sugar crash and I'd want more. This, because it's high in protein and fiber, I feel like I don't get that sugar crash. It just keeps me full for longer. So, I buy these sometimes with Nectar Card on Sainsbury's, they're a pound each, but other than that, they're more expensive and you have to buy them individually. So I've taken them to, I've taken to buying them in boxes from Amazon because they're gorgeous. I'm just going to, you know, for the sake of science, bite this into this to show you. Mm. Honestly, that's delicious. So these are hazelnut, is it praline or praline? I still don't know. I'm 40 years old. I still don't know how to pronounce that. So good. Anyway, I need to finish eating this. I'm gonna do some work now. Which I'm still doing at my sit stand desk with my walking treadmill. I absolutely love it. If you've not yet seen my video, I walked 100 miles on my walking pad in 30 days. Or that's the working title anyway. That's, it'll be something like that. Um, I believe it's already out. By the time you see this video, if not, it'll be out very soon. If you've not seen that video, please go and watch it because there were some massive changes, some really unexpected things happened since I've incorporated walking that much more into my daily routine and walking while working. So many really, really unexpected things. So I need you to go and watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. I'm trying out some new makeup today, which, I had a very human moment, as my therapist calls it, um, while unboxing, and I had my microphone wire plugged into the wrong hole on the microphone, and there was no audio. So in effect, I tried out <laughs> all this stuff and I chatted through showing it to you, but 
there was no sound. So we're just going to chat back over it now instead. I filmed it earlier. We're just going to talk about it now instead. Again, forgive me. The product I was super excited to try because quite frankly, since I discovered Charlotte Tilbury, I'm under her spell and everything she brings out, I want. And I think it's going to change my life and I'm convinced. So this is the Unreal Skin Sheer Glow Tint Hydrating Foundation Stick. If you've heard me talk about my skin and everything before, it leans towards dry. So I, I prefer a little bit of glowy. I was a bit concerned this would be too glowy, but I feel that when I did the rest of my makeup, it kind of all came together really, really well. I normally wear the Beautiful Skin Foundation in shade 3. You can see that I'm really going through it uh, because I use it every day. So I ordered this new foundation in shade 3. I did prep my skin with the Magic Cream, which I love. I use that every day. It really agrees with my skin. Magic Water Cream as well, which I also love, especially when the weather's warmer, but generally if the weather is normal because my skin's so dry, I like the Magic Cream. So I tried putting this all over my face. I was a little bit nervous. It was going to be more like the Flawless Filter. I was worried I'd look very, very shiny like the Tin Man. I did also buy another Charlotte Tilbury new release, which is the Beautiful Skin Island Glow Lip and Cheek Beach Peach Glow. It's not actually a new release. It's a shade extension of the Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. This one's the Pillow Talk, the shade I already had. And this is the Beach Peach Glow, which you can see I've already made a massive dent in. As I, was, as I was opening it, like the true professional that I am, I managed to drop it and gouge it with my nail and boil the look of it. Just clearly, I'm having one of those mornings where things are going a little bit squiffy, but never mind, let's just keep smiling. Anyway, I put the Beach Peach Glow on my cheeks. I started initially applying all this stuff to the brush, but then realised it's supposed to be done with fingers, so I switched to fingers. And I did powder down the centre a little bit and then added mascara. I will link everything um, down in the description that I've, I've used on my face today, as well as, because I always get asked about it, the lash serum that I've been using to grow my eyelashes and make them longer. Overall, I was a bit concerned about this being too shiny. I really wanted to try it because all of Charlotte Tilbury's marketing, it's like, it's unreal skin, it's just, it's gonna feel unreal, you're gonna feel amazing. And putting it on initially, I was a bit like, whoa, this is quite shiny. Do I want to be this shiny? Do I want to be like shiny, like the crab song in Moana? But um, actually, I I quite like it. I think it's it's the right amount of glow without being shiny by adding the powder. So if you've kind of got oily skin anywhere, you're not into glowy skin, then this might not be for you. But if you kind of want something super easy you can do with your fingers, especially like a holiday kind of combination, then I wonder if this might be something that you'd like. So the Pillow Talk um, version of this, you can see there's a bit of a dent in it. I've used it a bit. I kind of use it for a bit, then I forget about it. I wanted to try this Beach Peach Glow because it's new and, you know, shiny object syndrome, but I think I like it. This I put it on my lips as well. Initially, I was worried it's a bit orange on my lips, but I think I like it. I think I like it. So overall, for the summer, it's like a little summer combination. These to chuck on your cheeks, chuck on your lips. I'm liking. And I was like, am I going to love this? Am I going to be like, oh, too shiny? But I think just with a little bit of powder down the centre, I think it's good. I think it's all good because I kind of do love the glow obviously i've got like lights on my face at the moment so it adds a lot of glow and even my traditional charlotte tilbury um makeup is very glowy and sometimes when i've got lights shining on my face i even had someone comment on one of my videos once have you got vaseline on your face nope just charlotte tilbury glowy stuff but when i've got lights also shining onto my face sometimes it reflects it looks even more glowy i think if you look in daylight you don't see so much reflection of the glow. It looks a little bit more natural. Um, and it is supposed to be no makeup, makeup up. So anyway, I'll, like I said, I'll link all these below. I have got a discount code for Charlotte Tilbury. If you are buying for the first time, got 15% off. But I've also got, um, I'll link them from Sephora as well, because Sephora you can now get in the UK. I've got a discount code for Sephora, so I'll link all this below in the blog post that goes with the video. But if you choose Charlotte Tilbury as your favourite brand, you get an additional 10% off at Sephora. So it works with any brand, that you, so like whichever product you choose. 
it's Sephora's or if you're not familiar with it it's massive in America it's just where to get all kind of makeup skincare toiletries that kind of thing but the brand you pick I think you can pick two as your favorite brands you get an additional 10% off on top of whichever offers they've got going on which is amazing so um check all of that out down in the blog post description -y type thing and huge apologies for not just uh being able to show you the talk through bit i did this morning but do you know what sometimes life happens and i feel like i've been having quite a few of these life happen things lately and feel like the little like, life lesson sent to test me like i had totally separate with a different microphone microphone issues where i had to re-record my podcast i was talking about when we went to see inside out 2 and all the lessons that that's really taught me and how it's really changing how I'm talking to my children like so I'm not going to bore you with all that now because if you want to see that just please go and check out that podcast episode but I normally film that just all through and then it just needs to be edited I needed to go back to it three times because the audio was messed up three times so maybe it's one of those weeks maybe I need to think okay what is this trying to teach me what is the lesson here? Try not to lose it, Re. Just, what's the lesson? Okay, just looking at this in daylight, no filters as it is. I don't think, I, like, it is quite glowy. Overall, I think it's working. Back from the school run. Oh, it's looking to be one of those really crazy busy weeks. So, well, um, I don't know if you remember, was on antibiotics. I can't remember if I said on here or on Instagram. He was on antibiotics before we went to um, Alton Towers. So like the week before that, Zara was really ill. So she was on antibiotics. And we looked in Will's throat and he had some gungy thing on his tonsil. So we took him to the pharmacy and they did a strep test and he had strep. So he had antibiotics. And I can't remember why. Earlier, about a week, must have been about a week ago today, I... Um, looked in his throat again just to check and there was this white thing again on his tonsil so he went for another strep test it wasn't strep but they gave him a different antibiotic but other than that he had almost no symptoms until yesterday when he spiked a fever and he's been sort of under the weather but today it's his school production and he really didn't want to miss it so he's had calpol he's literally going to go in to do that i didn't know what to say to him really it's like he really, really wanted to do it. I didn't want to stop him, so I said, look, just go do the first half. Call me, I'll come pick you up. If... Anyway, it's just, he was so upset about not wanting to miss it, so I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not. Um, anyway, I've got him at a doctor's appointment for later. The doctor's appointment wasn't until um, later on. Anyway, and hopefully they can figure out what's going on there. Um, if you can hear a nail gun, going off randomly in the background that's because daddy of four is still working on the i'm not sure what we're calling it summer house garden room outside space large shed with seats in it i don't know but uh he's managed to get the frame up he's worked really hard on that and now we are um we are i'm not doing anything at all he is putting the roof on he's got his apprentice here he's putting the roof on um and they're doing that today so that's moving along nicely um, but today is also one of those well this week generally is one of those mental things so Will's got his school production the girls got a dancing show and um, we had a dress rehearsal for the girls yesterday they really you know it's just it's like it's lovely it's all lovely stuff but it's all sort of at once you know what I mean it's like it's, it just feels like quite a lot to fit in uh, so I'm gonna get on with some working and walking. I'm flipping loving my walking desk standing treadmill thing. Uh, I did a whole video talking about um, how I've walked over a hundred miles on it and that was in about 30 days um, and the differences it's made to me and it really has been absolutely game changing. So you have to watch that video if you want me to hop on about that because there's no point in um, repeating myself right here right now. But yeah, it just, it's made such a difference to me in lots and lots of different ways. So I'm gonna get started with that now. I've actually got two meetings today, which hopefully I can get done before I need to go and pick Will up. And the girls got swimming and all the things. Just one of those busy, busy, 
Okay, so let's wake up my treadmill and get walking. I'm thrilled to say that William seems so much better. Randomly, through no intervention from the doctor whatsoever, the doctor did look in his throat twice and said it was viral, but didn't even take his temperature. My husband took him because I was picking up the girls. Uh, anyway, he seems to be on the mend. That's the main thing. That's all I really care about. I've had a reasonably productive morning, other than having to go and drop off two water bottles to two different schools because two out of the three children left the water bottles at home and so I just one of those things. So other than that, I've managed to be pretty productive. Nah, you might hear some noises in the background. That is my husband who is still working on the summer house, which is coming along really, really quickly. It's amazing how much progress he's made in just a few short days. Um, other than my friend, which is driving me insane, I missed my last haircut appointment and I think our hairdress is coming again next week but look, look at the stone, it's driving me nuts. Anyway, um, other than that, we just move that out of the way. I am quite enjoying this Unreal Skin foundation. I really wasn't sure about it to start with. I saw loads of very mixed reviews online but I am liking it. It feels very light. It doesn't give you much coverage so I'm having to add a little bit of concealer just here and for any like blemishes like I've got some I don't know, odd coloured discoloration on my face there, but I'm just like, do you know what? I'm not even going to attempt to really cover that. I don't really care. But if I have any actual redness or spots, you need to kind of spot conceal. So it's not enough to really cover anything, but it's enough to kind of, what does Charlotte say? Blur, darling. Make an unreal, darling. I'm liking it. Anyway, I'm liking foundation with a little bit of powder and I have the powder bit here. And I'm liking the, this is the peachy cheek tint. So all of that stuff, I've been trying it for a couple of days. I am enjoying it all. So today I am off to my appointment for ADHD medication. When I was diagnosed for ADHD, even when I was in the process of getting assessed, I didn't want to get assessed so that I could get medication. In fact, I was very much like, no, I don't want medication, I just want to understand my own brain. Which is, you know, fine. So someone said to me, if you were diagnosed with diabetes, would you say no to insulin? And that made a lot of sense. In fact, I've said this sort of thing previously before this comment when talking about uh, mental health and antidepressants and things. It's not something I've ever needed, but when talking to other people in my life, my attitude's always very much been, why is there a stigma to this? And I always very much want the mental health side of medicine to catch up to the physical health side. My goal has always been that when the children are older, hopefully the whole society will catch up so that it's like, okay, so you've got a bad leg, get the doctor, so you know, you're suffering with mental health, get the help the same way, no stigma. But then I think I was just like, oh, I'm fine. I don't need it. But then... It seemed such a given when I was diagnosed. She's like, okay, next step is medication. And I thought about it and thought about it. And I just thought, where's the harm in trying? Because I don't know how much it will help. Now, obviously, if it doesn't make much difference and I have loads of negative side effects, I am functioning in my life. So I don't want it if it's going to make me feel worse in any way. But I'll only know that if I try. On the other hand it might be the best thing ever happened to me. I don't know because I haven't tried. So I'm going to go to this appointment. I'm going to learn about it. I'm going to see what they have to say. And I'm going to decide based on that information, not based on some, I don't know, something in my head, in my head I had that was like, no, I don't need that. Well, I think the open-minded thing to do is to find out. Back in the car now, which is like a flipping furnace, by the way. Not that I'm complaining about the nice weather, the nice weather fleet today, but you know, I just, just get some air in here. I'm going to say the same thing I've said when coming out of every single one of my ADHD appointments so far, which is that's not what I expected. Gosh, it's noisy, so I'm gonna have to close these windows and just burn on time. I'm just gonna have to just burn up.
yeah, it's just not what I expected at all. So I went in, I walked in, there was a student with it. Normally, through my extensive um, interactions with the medical community, although most of those would be through um, having babies, so mostly with midwives, they'd always be like, I've got a student with me, is that okay? Because I've got to say, other than um, pregnancy related stuff, I've not had much to do with the hospital. She didn't bother to introduce the student, which I thought was weird. Anyway, um, she went through, she said how, uh, she said, oh, you had your physical. I said, yeah, I did have my physical. Oh, by the way, can you please start telling people not to wear a dress to the physical? Because if you watch that blog where I went to that, you have to have an ECG and they have to put like stickers here, like under your bra, all sorts of places. So in effect, you've got to pull your dress up. And I was sitting there in my pants, put my denim jacket over my lap, but I was in effect sitting there in my pants. She honestly looked at me like I had two heads. Like, you know, because you need to do the ECG and it would be good to advise people. Yeah, she continued to look at me like I had two heads, so I just, I dropped that one. Anyway, she said, um, she went through my results, which on the day they said were fine. But, I've written it down because I can't remember what it said. She said my BP was 119 over 87 and she said anything over 90 on the bottom number is considered high blood pressure now i've normally got bonkers low blood pressure to which i replied maybe my blood pressure was up because i was sitting there in my pants she didn't appreciate that either anyway she also said i've written this down a separate note apparently she also said that my ecg was mostly okay other than it had and i don't know what this means i've got to google it a short pr interval or was it a PRE interval? I'm going to have to Google that and see what earth that is. But basically, she said she wants to give me the medication. She's happy to. She asked, how's my anxiety? It's like, well, I don't really suffer with anxiety. So she's like, basically checking. Am I anxious? Am I depressed? All the things. It's like, no, I'm fine. Um, short PR heart condition, heart rhythm, maybe. A short PR interval of less than 120 ms may be associated with pre-excitation syndrome such as wolf parkinson white syndrome or lone ganon levin syndrome oh great also junctional arrhythmia i don't know what any of that means is short pr life-threatening i shouldn't google so should i when is it length is less than i don't know what its length was what is short PR interval? Oh gosh, I'm going to have to Google all this a bit more. She basically said she didn't think it was worrying at all, but she's going to have to pass it over to a cardiologist. So she's supposed to be just giving me a prescription now. She's like, no, I'll get it. I'll run it past a cardiologist. It should be fine. Nothing to worry about. It wouldn't worry about it with me. It's like, okay, but now you have to run it past a cardiologist. So in effect, I need to go and Google what on earth this is. Although Dr. Google's never helpful. Maybe I should speak to an actual doctor I know. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe I should just ignore it until it comes back with the results. Anyway, if this problem that they found with the ECG, the cardiologist doesn't think is a, is a real big problem, and they will send me the prescription in the post. And apparently the prescriptions get sent out every 30 days, or I could go and collect them, but it's quite a long way from my house, so there's only chance it could be sent. But apparently every 28 days you have to ring them and ask them to post it. That doesn't seem a very sensible system, does it? Because if you need it every 30 days and then you're relying on the person being in, like this appointment was rescheduled from last week because this woman was off sick. But it's relying on someone being there and actually being able to post it on time, relying on the post and being able to pick things up in time. When your medication's supposed to be consistent, that doesn't seem a very reliable system to me, just as a bit of a thinking out loud. So anyway, I honestly thought I'd be walking away, clutching a prescription today and going away or I don't know, or just having more information in the appointment about the medication. I don't know. I don't know what I thought. It's not, this isn't what I thought. Okay, what else did she say? She said the short PR interval. She said that uh, the medication should be prescribing me. I should take every eight to 10 hours with a big breakfast because it's likely my, gosh, that's bad. She said I should take it with a big breakfast, not because it'll make me sick or anything, because something's going to take on a full stomach, but because I'm unlikely to feel hungry afterwards uh, because apparently it creates diminished appetite and she also said that if I've got a blood pressure monitor at home I should monitor my blood pressure twice a day for the next week 
to see if my blood pressure is becoming high. I must admit, I didn't have any anxiety or stress until now, and until they said there was something wrong with the thing and need blood pressure. That's not helping my blood pressure. Anyway, um, it's probably fine. It's probably nothing. It's probably, I don't know. The most sensible thing to do would have been like, take my blood pressure again now. She didn't have a blood pressure monitor, did she? No, she didn't. Oh well, I'm just gonna go home and process all this. The other thing is all this cardiology talk, I forgot to ask, I still haven't had a letter or anything confirming my diagnosis. I haven't had, I just feel like when the children had autism assessments, we had like a really in-depth report. It was really insightful and it was helpful. And I was kind of hoping for something like that, but I totally forgot to ask because I was all flubboxed over this cardiology business. So on the way home, I went to m and and got mango sorbet. You can, you actually tried the raspberry sorbet. The reason that we're, we're onto sorbets is I had from Sainsbury's, a really fancied sorbet for summer. This was the only one they had when I did a Sainsbury's delivery and everyone loved it. Even daddy of four was not normally into sorbet. So I got from Marks and Spencer's, because I looked online, where sells sorbet, went there on the way home. Mango sorbet, we have got more raspberry sorbet. These were three pounds in Marks and Spencer's compared to something like 275 in um, Sainsbury's and lemon sorbets. We've got three sorbets to try, people. Who's excited? Yay. Yeah, or should mummy just eat them all herself? Me, please. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of mango, a little bit of raspberry, a little bit of lemon. Kids, what do we think? I'm going to mm. try a little bit. I'm going to try some. What's that? Ah! Run away ice cream! I mean, super rat. Okay, let's give first, uh, what have I got my spoon first? Mango. Mango oh, sorbet like... was, my, was my go to favourite ice cream as a child, fun fact. Which oh, one? That's mango? Just a, the yellow one. Mm. Yes, Mummy, there's one problem. Mm, what's that? Um, mango isn't ice cream, it's sorbet. Sorry, I know, but if I, like, if I went for an ice cream as yeah. a child. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Which is the best one? Yellow! Raspberry. I mean, orange. I mean, yeah. Wow, mango. that's gorgeous. I like the These lemon are delicious. And raspberry, like melted sauce. Yeah. The lemon's the really mango. tangy. The mango's better off with them, like another flavour like raspberry. You think? Bella? I don't know. You don't know? Mm. You can Bella? tell. Which is the best one? Probably the raspberry. If you could only have one. Lemon. If you could only have one, count. Bella says raspberry, William says I'll take lemon. lemon. I like the lemon in the raspberry sauce though, just like. This tastes like cloudy lemonade. Mm, yeah, I, I suppose it does in um, in Florida. Well, well done, Marks and Spencer's. These are So it's the next day. I've got my hair all scraped up because it is warm. Kind of sticky warm though, so hair up is the way forward. Feeling about yesterday's medication thing. I think I just need to not worry about this heart thingy that I don't seem to understand. I spoke to my cousin who's a paramedic and a friend of mine who's a doctor. Both of them said that whatever this, I can't remember what it's called now, P short PR, something like that, thing is without any other symptoms isn't something they'd worry about. So I'm just gonna shelve thinking about that. In the words of Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind, I won't think about that today. I'll think about that tomorrow. <laughs> um, last night was Will's show. He was sensational. Um, I took the girls and I was going to film a little bit, like a, a bit of a debrief when we got home, but they were all on their knees. Will was exhausted from performing, the girls were exhausted for being kept up late and it's on a school night and I was like, do I take them? It is late. Because I know they stay up late on like Disney shows and things, but then I have to drag them out of bed on Disney shows in the morning because they don't get up early and obviously they'd had a full day in school. So... Yeah, long story short, I did not film a little, hey Will, how was it? And girls, what do you think of the show? Last night, because they were all struggling. <laughs> they had a lovely time, but by the time they got back, they were all struggling. So um, anyway, they're all in school today. This morning was challenging, getting everyone up and ready on time, but still, overall, glad that they, they got to see him. They got to experience that. The summer house is coming along beautifully. So that's all good news. Go and stick on a load of laundry and do the school run and then dancing, all sorts of other activities tonight. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do those YouTube-y things. Click on another video I know you'll enjoy on screen there and I'll see you guys in the next one.